fans list. So without further ado, let's jump into the driver's seat and get the engine started. Made in Triumph's Coventry factory, this Mark I Stag has received much care and attention since it was purchased in June 1999 for £4,000. Since then, restoration has been an ongoing affair, but this hasn't compromised anything as it's still been enjoyed to the full, clocking up a full 85,000 miles. Although mass production of the Triumph Stag began in 1970, the idea was planted several years before in 1964, when Giovanni Michelotti decided to create a car for the forthcoming Turin Motor Show. Already on good terms with Triumph, he approached engineering director Harry Webster to see if they had a surplus works vehicle that he could use as a basis. The result of Michelotti's stylish talents couldn't be more superbly displayed than in this 1972 model, one of about 3,500 to be produced in the UK that year. But it was still a few years after Michelotti's initial idea that the final model would be produced and assigned the stag title. Originally, Harry Webster had provided Michelotti with an old Triumph 2000, hot off the racing circuit, where it had been a support vehicle for the Spitfires in Le Mans' 24-hour race. It was provided on the condition that Triumph could get first refusal if they thought they might want it for themselves. Whilst retaining the drivetrain, suspension and floor pan, Michelotti transformed the 2000 saloon model into a shorter, four-seat, two-door Grand Tour. Once again, Michelotti had applied his unique flair, wowing the people at Triumph so much that the new creation was taken in and reviewed for mass production. It never did grace the Michelotti stand at the 1964 Turin Motor Show. Sales release was set for 1968, but the car, originally designed as a showpiece, was not quite ready as a production vehicle, and a few alterations had to be made before the public could safely get their hands on it. One change was the incorporation of an overhead bar to provide rollover protection and a secure, rigid frame. This T-bar has become a distinctive characterising feature of the stag. At the same time as these developments were being made, Triumph was also producing an in-house engine, the 2.5-litre V8 with fuel injection, soon enlarged to a 3-litre capacity unit. Eventually, by June 1970, the Stag, featuring Triumph's new V8 engine, was available to the British public, and exports to America began the following year. The new Stag also featured all-round independent suspension, power steering, and a four-speed manual gearbox with optional overdrive. The Mark I Stags made for the American market were slightly different, having lower power emission control and side marker lights with the Stag motif positioned under the rear side lamp. Holding so much promise with its sleek appearance and stylistic hallmarks, the Stag was a potential hit. However, this was not to be. The main offender was the unreliable V8 engine that had a tendency to overheat and, at worst, explode, which was usually triggered by a blocked radiator. America was most unimpressed. The number of warranty claims soared to a great height. 
in 1973, just two years after it had appeared, Triumph saw no other option than to remove the stag from American showrooms altogether. In total, America imported about 3,900 of the cars. Early Mark I's also had a temperature warning light, but they proved so inaccurate that they had to be discontinued. Production factories were ordered to cut back the wire from the switch so that the lights would no longer be able to operate. Triumph was working hard to overcome the various problems and, luckily for this stag model, a new radiator had been installed by 1972. Another improvement made at this time was a redesigned air filter box. A heat-sensitive vacuum with a control flap was installed to draw in either hot or cold air, depending on the engine's need. With some further technical and cosmetic changes, the Mark II Stag models were introduced in February 1973. Among other alterations, gauge needles that had pointed down in the Mark I model now pointed up. The front seats were adjusted for headrest fixtures and a smaller steering wheel was fitted. A few changes were made to the engine including a reshaped combustion chamber and a dome top added over the pistons. The manual with overdrive became standard in Mark II Stags and used a J-type overdrive as opposed to the A-type in the Mark I models. Other differences incorporated a laminated windscreen, the absence of side windows in the soft tops and a stylistic tweaking of the interior designs. But even with such modifications, the Stag did not go on to be an outstanding marketing success. And although further minor improvements were continually made, Triumph discontinued production in June of 1977. In total, over seven years, Triumph produced 25,877 of the Stag models. Today, the Stag evokes a much happier story and is a greatly celebrated model of the Triumph range. As we can see for ourselves, with proper care and attention, the Stag performs to a superb standard. The original maximum speed of 120 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 of 9.3 seconds could certainly give some vehicles on the road today a run for their money. Restoring a classic car is always a satisfying process and anyone embarking on a project of their own will be pleased to know that obtaining spare parts for a stag model shouldn't prove too problematic. Embraced by thousands of loyal devotees, the stag has become a true triumph classic with a whole network of clubs at home and abroad to pursue interests and gain knowledge. Events for the stag are held at both local and international levels and can vary from a day of competitions and fun social activities to a weekend break on the continent.